This video will cover setup, usage, maintenance, and troubleshooting for the rigid 10-inch portable tile saw with laser, R4010, 7-inch portable job site wet saw, R4020, 7-inch job site tile saw with stand, R4030S, 8-inch wet tile and paver saw with stand, R4040S, and the 10-inch commercial tile saw, R4090. This video is not designed to replace your product's operator's manual. This video is here as a guide to offer clarification to key features on your tool. Always read, understand, and follow the warnings and instructions outlined in your product's operator's manual prior to use. You can also contact Rigid Customer Service for further product information. If you do not have a copy of your product's operator's manual, call Rigid Customer Service at 866-539-1710 or visit rigid.com to obtain one before you use your product. Rigid tile saws are designed to cut man-made tile, pavers, and stone tile products only. Never operate your tile saw on the floor or in a crouched position. Place the tile saw stand or work table on level ground. Place saw securely on included stand. When not using an included stand, bolt or clamp the tile saw to an approved work table or tile saw stand. Read your tile saw's operator's manual for work table mounting. When setting up the saw for use, the operator should arrange a drip loop in the cord connecting the saw to the outlet. The drip loop is that part of the cord below the level of the outlet, or the extension cord connector if an extension cord is used to prevent water traveling along the cord and coming in contact with the outlet. To use your rigid tile saw, plug the saw into a suitable power outlet with a ground fault circuit interrupter protection on the circuit or outlet to be used for the tile saw. If a GFCI outlet is not near the saw, use only an extension cord heavy enough to carry the current your product will draw and make sure your extension cord is in good condition. Always draw the line to be cut on the tile using a marker or grease pencil. If the tile is shiny and hard to mark, place masking tape on the tile and mark the tape. When making cuts with a tabletop tile saw, the splash hood should be used to contain overspray and mist. Adjust the splash hood horizontally to the table and slightly above tile thickness, and the hood should not touch the tile. For rip cuts, Place the rip guide in the desired position using the rip guide scale located on the front of the saw table. Push the locking lever down to secure the saw table. Ensure the material is on the table and firmly against the rip guide and make sure the material is clear of the cutting wheel before turning on the saw. For all cuts, turn the switch on and let the cutting wheel build up to full speed. Wait for the wheel to get wet before moving the material into the wheel. Hold the material firmly against the rip guide and feed the material into the cutting wheel. After the cut, tip the tile back towards the saw so that the remaining water on the tile will run back to the saw. Turn the saw off. Bevel 22.5 degree and 45 degree cuts can be made using the bevel table. Remove the rip guide and tilt the bevel table to desired angle. On underside of bevel table, Pull down the table legs into right angles to the plate. Use first notches in table bevel supports to rest plate into 22 and a half degree angle. Use second set of notches to angle bevel table into highest 45 degree angle. Hold the material firmly against the bevel table and make your cut. For diagonal and miter cuts, install the miter guide and adjust to desired angle using angle scale and tighten securely with lock knob. Position the rip guide the desired distance from the wheel for the cut and secure the lock lever. Place the material on the table and firmly against the rip guide. Make sure the material is clear of the cutting wheel before turning on the saw. Make cut. Connect the pump power cord to the motor head power cord. Check that the rubber boot is pulled over cord connection to help keep water off the plug. Where applicable, rest power cord and water hose in the notches provided on the water tray. Install saw frame to water tray. 
and water tray extension as required. When using the R4040S and R4030, install drain plug and fill the water reservoir with clean tap water to the fill line. Do not fill past the maximum line. The R4010 and R4090 saws have water tanks, so ensure that the drain plug is removed. On all overhead rigid saws, the rolling table allows the user to slide the workpiece into the cutting wheel for accurate cuts. For all cuts, turn switch on and let the cutting wheel build up to full speed. Wait for the wheel to get wet before moving the material into the wheel. Hold the material firmly against the miter guide and fence and slowly feed the material into the cutting wheel. When the cut is made, turn the saw off. Wait for the cutting wheel to come to a complete stop before removing any part of the material. For cross cuts, set the miter guide and lock in place, ensuring that it will not be in the path of the cutting wheel. Place the material on the table firmly against the miter guide and fence. Make sure the material is clear of the cutting wheel before turning on the saw. Turn saw on. Make your cut. For bevel cuts, Move the table out of the path of the cutting wheel. Only the R4090 can cut any bevel angle from 0 to 45 degrees. All other rigid tile saws are limited to 0, 22 and a half, or 45 degree bevel cuts. Loosen the bevel lock knob and move the saw arm to the desired bevel angle. Place the miter guide on the table the desired distance from the wheel and lock in place. Make sure the material is clear of the cutting wheel before turning on the saw. Turn saw on. Make your cut. Diagonal and miter cuts can easily be made on overhead saws. The laser can be used as a guide to easily align your cut line. Set the miter guide to the desired setting. Lock it in place and tighten the lock knob. Make sure the miter guide is not in the cut path. Place the material on the table and firmly against the miter guide. Turn saw on. Make the cut. Plunge cuts are made by positioning the material directly underneath the cutting wheel and lowering the wheel onto the workpiece and should be made only on overhead saws. This allows pieces to be cut from the center of the material. Loosen the lock knob on the side of the motor head. Remove locking pin if required and position the motor head upward to its maximum height. Set miter guide to the desired setting. Lock in place and tighten the lock knob. Hold the motor head firmly by the handle and use the laser to help move the material into the desired position for cutting. Slowly lower the motor head into the material to make the cut. L cuts remove a piece of tile to fit in a corner, around a cabinet, or a piece of molding and are made by two separate cuts and can be made with both the tabletop and overhead saws. Mark the area to be cut on both sides of the material. Set miter guide to desired setting and lock in place. Place material on the table and firmly against the miter guide and fence. Make sure material is clear of the cutting wheel before turning on the saw. Since both cuts will only cut part way through the material, only overcut on the bottom or underneath side of the material being cut. 
Make the cut far enough into the material without overcutting other line. Turn off saw. Turn the material over. Turn saw back on and make the cut along uncut mark. This time, carefully cut the other line and the cut piece should separate from the rest of the material. Garden pavers require special cuts to make curves and corners in walls, patios, and other landscaping features. R4040S, R4010, and R4090 are capable of cutting garden pavers. It will require two cuts. The R4040S allows toolless removal of the side splash guards to allow for greater clearance needed for thicker material cuts. Make two marks, marking all the way around the paver. Place material on the table and firmly against the fence. Make sure paver is clear of the cutting wheel before turning on the saw. Feed paver into cutting wheel. Turn saw off. Turn paver over. Turn saw back on and make the second cut. Although the rigid tile saw has been adjusted at the factory for making very accurate cuts, over a period of time, readjustment may become necessary due to wear or other factors. Make any readjustments that are necessary and periodically check the part's alignment to make sure that the saw is cutting accurately. Refer to your operator's manual for direction on maintenance and adjustments. Whether the cutting wheel is worn or a different type of cutting wheel is needed for your cut, cutting wheel changes will eventually be required for your saw. To change the cutting wheel, unplug the saw. For tabletop saws, remove the bevel table and move the splash hood clear of the cutting wheel. For overhead saws, lock table in front position and lock in place. Loosen wheel guard knob by turning counterclockwise and open the cutting wheel guard. Remove outer water nozzle. Place the wheel wrench on the arbor nut and then slide the 6mm hex wrench into arbor or depress arbor lock button. Holding wheel wrench firmly to prevent movement, turn hex wrench clockwise to loosen. Remove arbor nut and outer washer, leaving inner washer on the arbor. Ensuring that saws equipped with removable water nozzles have the nozzle ports facing the cutting wheel, place the cutting wheel onto arbor with the arrows on the wheel going in the counterclockwise direction. Replace the outer washer. The double D flats on the washer align with the flats on the arbor. Be sure the hollow side of the washer is against the cutting wheel. Replace the arbor nut. Using wheel wrench and arbor wrench, tighten the arbor nut securely. Reinstall previously removed or open parts. Always clean your tile saw after use to ensure that your saw performs at optimal levels. Follow the instructions in your manual to clean the tables, rails, fence, and pump to prevent premature pump failure. The rigid tile saws should provide an excellent cut for your material, but there may be a time when the cut is not as good as when the saw was new. For tabletop tile saws, ensure that the fence is square to the cutting wheel. The table on the saw may need to be adjusted to ensure that the fence runs parallel with the cutting wheel for the best possible cut. If excessive chipping of the workpiece occurs on an overhead saw, there are several possibilities for the diminished cut. Make sure that there is adequate water getting into the cutting wheel. If you notice any dust or sparks coming off the material, more than likely there is a water flow issue. Make sure the water nozzles are free from debris. Small particles of sediment could cause the water stream to spray away from the cutting wheel, which could cause chipping and diminished wheel life. 
Second, ensure that the water lines are not clogged. Clogged water lines can cause the same symptoms as a restricted nozzle. If water flow to the nozzle is not an issue, table and rail alignment should be checked. If there's no chipping on the front part of the cut, but excessive chipping of the material as the wheel comes out the back side of the tile, the left rail can be moved to square the table to the cutting wheel. Unplug the saw, and then, using the hex key, loosen cap bolts on the left rail. Place a framing square against the fence and the flat part of the wheel. Make adjustments and tighten bolts securely. Move sliding table through full range of travel to check for square. Visually check that the blade is centered in zero degree slot. Finally, if the material requires a little extra force to make the cut, the cutting wheel may need to be replaced. For stubborn tile that either has excessive chipping or cracks at the end of the cut, try using the plunge function to score the cut and plunge through the last few inches of the cut. The tile could then be run through a second time at full plunge for a better cut.